Hello, my name is Bob. Welcome to a short stop on pool. This week's rack of the week is short but sweet. I've got a bit of a scratchy throat and I've had to edit out a lot of coughs. And the camera angle is a little bit low, but I think it's a really good example of transitioning to the uh, outside trouble balls working outside in. It's really interesting too that I just published a video on elbow movement. And I'm noticing in this rack that I swung my cue from the shoulder on the number of shots. So that's kind of embarrassing, but I'm really glad to notice it. It's obviously something I've been working on in the year and a half or so since I shot this rack. And I think that's making a difference in my game. Let's get into the rack. This is the first rack of the run, so it's a side of the rack break shot. This is a real good example of what you want to avoid. The cue ball went to the rail, and with outside English, the cue ball came way up table. You really don't want any outside English, you want uh, a center ball so that the cue ball doesn't end up traveling way up table or getting lost uh, down below. But I was fortunate to have the 10 ball close to the pocket, so I was able to get the cue ball into play easily. And now, through the, let's do the typical rack analysis. I can see the four ball and the one ball, and then possibly the 14 are potential break balls into the next rack. There are no good key balls into the side pocket. Unless if the six might possibly be a key ball for the one, that's a pretty weak play. I would think something better might show up. But that's the first thing I notice. Second thing I notice is there's two trouble balls, an up table ball on the rail. And the six ball is kind of a trouble ball. I, I don't think it's as easily pocketable in the side pocket as it might look. It's pretty close to the rail up there. Aside from that, what I'm seeing is, I'm gonna look at these pairs of balls. So these two balls both go in the lower left corner pocket. The three is a blocker ball. So I'm identif identifying the three ball as a ball that I want to remove early in the rack. Secondly, these two balls both go in this side pocket. And I don't think they go in this pocket because the 13 and the eight are in the way. So the 13 and the eight are kind of tied up I don't think that they even go in the lower left once the 12 are gone. I think they're kind of blocking each other. So those are the only balls on the table that might need to be nudged in some fashion in order to make the rack more runnable. And so my initial, uh, once I made that 10 ball, I'm laying on the rail so I have a slight angle up table from this 2 ball. So the first thing I want to accomplish is re removing this 3 ball and then I'll be able to maneuver the rest of the rack. I'm probably going to be looking at getting rid of the, these two trouble balls early as well. So right here I'm, I'm looking at the situation and I'm standing over here behind the three because I'm going to want to play possibly the three ball over in this pocket. And I think that's what I'm attempting to play position for right now. So this isn't bad. I could obviously shoot the three ball right now but I think that my cue ball is going in this direction off from the three. So these balls aren't really trouble, and there's no insurance ball. I don't really have a shot on one of these balls into this pocket after shooting the three. So I turn my attention away from the three and go to the one. The reason is now instead of being low on the three, now I'm high on the three. And this lets me address these two balls because now I can go off the rail and move these balls, and the 12 is an insurance ball back in this direction. So that's, the really, that's really the shot that sells the rack. Now notice, that wasn't a breakout shot. I just nudged that real gently. And even so, I hit the 13 ball full and moved it all the way to the rail. So that becomes a third trouble ball, because this ball on the rail, if the four is my break ball, any ball that's along the rail on, this, on the same side as the break ball is pretty useless something you want to get rid of. And so now I'm shooting the 12, and that shot, I'm gonna pause the rack here for a second, right here. So I shot that 12, and I think a lot of players might, might have just tried to hold the cue ball here for one of the seven or the nine into this corner pocket. But I've got three trouble balls. I've got three balls that I would call are on the outside of the rack or the outside of the table. So the inside of the table's been solved. So don't hang out there. That's already been solved. Both the eight and the four go to this pocket. Both of these balls go to this pocket. Both of these balls go to this pocket. This is gonna be very manageable in a number of different ways. So once I nudge that 13 over to the rail, now I'm 
moving to the outside of the rack. I've got to deal with these balls. Now I imagine that when I shot this, this 12, I probably wanted the cue ball to go more of this direction. So I didn't have as quite of a cut on this uh, strike ball on the rail. But that's the obvious shot. And part of the reason why, even though I have somewhat of a sharp angle, it's a rail shot. Uh, you're a good player, you're supposed to make this ball. And it's natural position because the tangent angle is just straight across the table. And that's gonna get me onto the six, which is my other trouble ball. And I know that if I have an angle, either angle on this six ball, I'm gonna be able to transition back across the table and get my third uh, outside trouble ball, the 13. So that's what I see. That's the reason why the 11 ball is the correct shot. Cue ball bounces again a little bit far off the rail, so just like the 11, I have a little more angle than I want, but there's, I mean, obviously I could shoot the eight here and try to do something else, but the six ball's are the right shot. Once again, the reason why it's the right shot you don't have to do anything with the cue ball. Now, I came real close to scratching, but it was under control. That cue ball was coming straight across the table, and the 13 is the next ball to shoot. So this is working outside in. And if you notice, I took a moment to check my angle off that 13. I, I want to make sure I get somewhat close to straight in on these balls. So it looks like I have a shot on the 7, and I want, I'm trying to get on the 8. Oh, and I nudged this ball. Okay. So the, the goal there was to move this ball up that gives me more options. Look, I want to shoot this eight. That's definitely what I was going to shoot next. But shooting the eight is going to send my cue ball into the four, and the four is probably my break ball. So I quickly decide to go to the 15 because I can move the cue ball over and get close to straight in the eight. And it may look pretty straight on this video because the camera angle is low, but I'm not straight. So again, I'm studying it because I've got a little bit of a conundrum. In other words, I don't have the ability to just hold the cue ball here for the nine. But I have the angle. Again, it's hard to tell because of the low cam camera angle. But I have the angle to bring the cue ball across to this side. And that's a really good choice because even if I miss hit it and come low, boom, I've got the 14 on the side. So it's a matter of options, keeping your options open. Now, I didn't come low. I've got a shot on the nine ball. And this is really an ideal situation. I don't have what we call a typical key ball. Let me pause this for just a second. You saw me put my Q-tip on the table right here. What I have here is a situation, and I think I mentioned this in a previous uh, Rack of the Week. Mike, Mike Siegel used to love this situation. Here's the spot. It's kind of hard to tell because of the low camera angle, but there's the rack area. So I have two break balls, one on each side of the rack. And when you have that situation, either ball can be a key ball for the other one as the break ball. And so this is the ideal situation, or the ideal location to play position from the nine. The reason why is you can tell that the four ball is farther from the rack than the 14. So from out here, I'm going to have an angle to draw the cue ball back for the 14 ball break shot. Or I'm going to have an angle to shoot the 14 and go two rails around the four and have the four ball for a break shot. Was that too much of a mess on the table there? From this spot, I'm gonna have two rails, a two rail position around the four ball to use the four ball as a break. Alternatively, I'll have an angle on the four to draw back or possibly go to the rail and back up for the 14 as a break shot. And there's other uh, positional routes that can happen as well. But it was important to take a moment to, to uh, find that spot so it was right about here where my cursor is let's see if i get there so a little bit short so i came a little bit short i still have an option of using the uh, 14 as a break ball and the four as the key but looks like i'm pretty confident in my route which is just one rail past the break shot like so so the point is when you have a, a break ball on both sides of the rack geez you just have lots of options so I didn't want to come too far with that draw shot, so I understroked it a little bit. I've got a pretty, fairly sharp cut. I'm well inside of the four ball into the corner. And I'm probably going to contact the second ball from the bottom here. So this is just a straight high ball. Uh, possibly a little bit of outside English. You know, it looks like I'm shooting low, kind of center. Ooh, I think that hit the, the middle ball of the rack. 
But anyway, having that center foul stroke drove the cue ball straight to the bottom rail and kept it under control and kept it from scratching off that one ball. Look how quickly I went to the two ball. It allows me to attack that cluster in the center of the table and I've got insurance balls everywhere. I hope you found that informative, entertaining, and helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button and give me a thumbs up. Head over to satoriflatrack.com and check out the promo video for my new and unique pool ball rack. And of course, shortstoponpool.com for my book, A Shortstop on Straight Pool. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time at Shortstop on Pool.